In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages PowerPoint 36 and 37 in which we're going to edit and duplicate shapes. After watching this video, you should be able to modify shape size and design and duplicate shapes. Once you have created a shape, you still have the ability to refine its basic characteristics, which help change the size and appearance of the shape. For example, if you create a shape and it's too large, you could reduce its size by dragging any of its sizing handles. Most PowerPoint shapes can have text attached to them. All shapes can be moved and copied. To help you resize and move shapes and other objects precisely, PowerPoint has rulers you can add to the slide pane. Rulers display the measurement system your computer uses either in inches or metric measurements. Now taking a look at step one on page PowerPoint 36, it tells us that we want to right click a blank area of slide four. And of course we should be on slide four with the Atlantic region stations here. And we're just gonna right click on a blank area here. And that's gonna bring up the shortcut menu. Next, it tells us that we wanna click on ruler on the shortcut menu that appears. And of course we now notice that the ruler appears on there. Then we want to click the bottom part of the circle shape to select it. Now the ruler appears on the left, as we see over here, and the top um, of the slide pane. Now unless the ruler has been changed to metric measurements, it is divided into inches and half inch and eighth inch marks. Notice that the current location of the, um, uh, the mouse pointer is identified on both rulers by a small dotted red line in the ruler. So I can move this around and of course you'll notice that right now I'm at, um, you know, I could be right here at the center of the slide. And of course if it's right on the zeros uh, right there, that is the perfect center of the slide. And of course that just kind of gives you a location of where you're at on the slide to kind of help you align things up. Next on step two, it tells us that we want to press our shift key and drag the lower right sizing handle on the circle shape up and to the left um, on there. So we're on the lower right sizing handle here, up and to the left approximately about a quarter of an inch uh, that's on there. So that takes you about two of the little marks uh, that's on there. Once we have that, release your mouse button and then release your shift key. Now the distance of a quarter of an inch on the ruler is the distance between two lines uh, that's on there. Of course, reading a ruler, of course, from the zero to one would be one inch. From the zero to this mark right here would be half an inch. And of course, a quarter of an inch would be half of a half inch, which would be to this right here. So it'd be one dot, two dots right here. So this would be a quarter of an inch right here from the zero to a quarter of an inch. Uh, that kind of shows you just size wise how it is and that's why it's important to kind of have these little red dotted lines on a ruler to kind of see where we're actually uh, locating at. Now of course the circle shape is now slightly smaller in diameter. In step three it tells us that we want to position our mouse pointer over the selected circle shape uh, on there until it turns into a four-headed black arrow with our mouse pointer and then it tells us to drag the circle shape to the smart guides on the slide as shown in figure B11. Now on figure B11, it tells us that we want to take this over and we want to um, move this over to where it's just right, uh, right here, um, just about at the susex, but over here just a little bit over in this area here. So we're in this area here where we see the smart guide right there. And then of course we want this to be on this side right over here. So sometimes you may have to kind of position this just ever so slightly until finally the smart guides uh, catch on to you as well. Once you have it right here in this location where the smart guides do take over and uh, select it on there. That is where we want it to be at. And of course PowerPoint uses a series of evenly spaced horizontal and vertical lines. And these are called grid lines. 
uh, to align objects which force objects to snap to a grid and that's where sometimes you may not get that line perfectly on there but uh, it will eventually snap uh, to that grid that's on there as well. So if it's not perfectly on there, sometimes that grid line may be just a little bit off for you. So as close as you can get to that, where it will automatically snap for you using those smart uh, uh, smart grid uh, or smart guides on there. And of course, to display or hide the grid lines, you can always click on right click and then go to the grid and guides. And you can just always click on grid lines and you can take a look at where those grid lines are at. So if you needed some additional assistance, you can always take a look and kind of say, Okay, so where is this located at? And say, well, if I wanted it right here on this grid line, there, I can move it right there, and that's where it could be at. Of course, if I wanted to remove the grid lines, I can just right click again, go to grid and guides, and click on my grid lines. Next, on step four, it tells us me that I want to position my mouse pointer over the bottom part of the circle shape, and then I want to press and hold the control key. And then on step five, while holding the control key, I'm going to click and drag the circle shape to the right until the circle shape copy is in a blank area of the slide. So notice that I'm dragging this over and now it's in a blank area of the slide. I can release my mouse button and then I can release my control key. Now we'll notice that an identical copy of the circle shape appears on the slide and smart guides appear above and below the shape as you drag the new shape to the right, which helps you align these shapes. So now that we have an identical copy of this, and it tells us that with the second shape still selected, we now want to click the copy list arrow that is up here in the clipboard group. And then we want to click on Duplicate. And once we have that, we now have another copy of this. And it tells us that we want to click on this again, and we want to align these three up so that they're in a line. So now we have three of the same uh, circle shapes that as well. And it says to move the duplicate circle shapes to the right in a blank area of the slide. Now you have duplicated the circle shape twice and now have three shapes on the slide. On step seven, it tells us that we now want to click on the view tab, which is on the ribbon. And then we can go through to the show uh, group here and click on the ruler. And that will hide the ruler and close the ruler. Then we can go ahead and click on the home tab And then finally, with this last shape still selected, type in the word excursions, E-X-C-U-R-S-I-O-N-S. -S. And this shows you that you can actually type in a shape that's on there. Of course, now that we have our ruler closed, um, and the text you type appears in the selected circle shape and becomes part of the shape. Now, if you move or rotate the shape, the text will move with it. So make sure that you go ahead and compare your screen with what you see here as well as what you see on page PowerPoint 37. Now if you need to, you can always move these in just a little bit closer uh, on there. So just kind of use your best judgment um, right there is kind of evenly spaced out. If you want to you know, use the uh, smart guides to kind of help you space these out evenly. And of course, a quick tip as well, you can always press and hold the ALT key, or the ALT key, to temporarily turn the Snap to Grid feature off while dragging objects on the slide, or dragging a sizing handle to make precise adjustments. Finally, in step 8, it tells us that we want to click on the middle circle shape. So, we were over here at the excursions. You want to click on the bottom part of the middle circle shape, and we want to type in the word getaways. So G-E-T-A-W-A-Y-S. And then finally click on the left circle shape and type in holidays. Then finally click on a blank area of the PowerPoint uh, slide and then save your work. Now on page PowerPoint 37 it talks a little bit about editing points of a shape. And if you want to customize the form or outline of any shape in the shapes gallery, you can modify its edit points. To display a shape's edit points, select the shape you want to modify, 
click the Drawing Tools Format tab on the ribbon, and then click the Edit Shape button in the Insert Shapes group. Click the Edit Points, and of course black edit points will appear on the shape. To change the form of the shape, just drag a black edit point. When you click a black edit point, white square edit points appear on either side of the black edit point, which allow you to change the curvature of the line between the two black edit points. When you are finished with your custom shape, you can save it as a picture and reuse it in other presentations or files. And of course, to save the shape as a picture, you can always right click the shape and then click the Save as Picture. And that concludes the information that's on pages PowerPoint 36 and 37. And in our next video, we're going to be aligning and grouping objects.